Right. Is this good? I can't tell. Okay, hello friends. I'm Fionn, if you didn't know, and I have been on YouTube for about a year now. I mostly make videos about mental health, but I throw in a lot of random stuff as well, like this video. So this might be a little bit different for, for the subscribers that regularly watch my videos. But you know, we all need a little bit of something different now. Maybe constantly talking about mental health would get a bit tiresome for all of you. So something a little more just about me, I guess, even though there's going to be some talk about mental health in this video because you'll see. <laughs> I want to make a video today because it was suggested to me and because maybe you'll find it interesting about my tattoos. So I only have two so far but you know fingers crossed if I'm on YouTube for a long time from now in the future you'll get an updated one whenever I get more tattoos or maybe I'll be able to do like a, um, a tattoo vlog or something. So I love tattoo tour videos. I've watched so so many in my time before getting tattoos and after getting tattoos. I just love to see the tattoos that people have and why they have them, when they got them, how they feel about it all. It's just really really interesting to me. So yeah, I know I love these videos so maybe someone out there also loves to hear about people's tattoos and why they got them and all of that jazz. So that's what I'm doing today. They're pretty cool tattoos for one and yeah, they have a lot of meaning to me so I want to talk about my experience with them and whatnot. So I have some notes so that I know what I'm saying. Okay, so first tattoo. I got this one in December 2017, I think 9th of December 2017 for the exact date that I got my first tattoo. I travelled all the way down the country to Norwich for this one and it is based on Schrodinger's cat basically. I call this my Schrodinger's cat tattoo is on my, the um, kind of lower thigh I guess, or middle of thigh, and I named him Erwin <laughs> after Erwin Schrodinger. <laughs> yes, and I love him very much, so yeah, I've had this one now for, I guess that means it's like two and a half years? So he's doing pretty well to say he's two and a half years old. I think there are bits that could do with touching up some of the lines, but otherwise, you know, it's kept really really well and I love him just as much as the first day I got him. I'll go into the meaning of it first and all the connections that it has to me and my life and stuff and why I got it <laughs> and then afterwards I'll mention pain and the tattoo artist and things like that. So like I said this is based on Schrodinger's cat so if you haven't heard of Schrodinger's cat it is a thought experiment by a guy named Owen Schrodinger and basically no one does this for real don't worry no cats are harmed in the uh, process of <laughs> Schrodinger's cat thought experiment but basically you imagine a cat in a box with a vial of poison or something in the box and it is either a vial of poison or like a radioactive substance basically radioactive substance probably makes more sense but there's a vial of this radioactive substance in the hey Anthony she knows I'm talking about cats <laughs> don't worry no one's gonna irradiate you and kill you you're nice and safe you're not in any boxes you're just in my room radioactive substance in an enclosed box and there's a cat in it the nature of a radioactive substance typically is that it will it will decay in a completely random amount of time and you cannot know when that will happen it could just happen at any odd time and you have no idea about it so with the box closed, you have no idea whether the cat is still alive or whether it's dead, as in whether the vial of poison has broken or whether it, you know, whether the radioactive substance has irradiated the cat already. You have to, without being able to open the box, you have to imagine that the cat is both alive and dead because it's inside the box. You can't know one way or the other. So you can only think of it as both a superposition of both states of being alive and dead at the same time. So it's very very trippy, <laughs> but it's very 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 cool, I think, to think of it. So I um, first heard of the Schrodinger's Cat Thought Experiment, and probably if you've not heard of it before and you're just hearing about it now, or you remember when you first heard about, heard about it, you probably thought, wow, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> what does that even mean? You know, maybe you even thought whether you believe it or not, whether you thought whether you feel like you can say that the cat in the box is alive and dead or whether you think that it is one or the other, it can only be one or the other. But then I studied physics and 
learnt more about the Schrodinger's cat thought experiment but more so Schrodinger's equations. So what I came to learn was that this experiment is based on, it is kind of like more of a, a visual or like a way to picture this quantum mechanical concept that's like a real life thing. You know, it's a real theory that the world works in such a way a particle can be in multiple different states at once. So basically you will think of like everything that you see to be this is here in this space and time and that's that, it's as simple as that. But if you think about it quantum mechanically, unless you can measure something, it will be in this place but it could also be in this place if you know what I'm saying. So yeah, that's that's kind of what um, Schrodinger's equations represent, the fact that particles or waves, unless you have a way to directly measure them, they will be in like any number of different positions, you know what I mean? Like all at the same time. So it, it could be here, it could be here, but instead in this sort of quantum mechanical approach of thinking of it, it is here, but it's also here, but it's also here, but it's also here, it's also here, and it's also here. And it's <laughs> all of those places at all times, if you know what I mean. So it's like, it blows my mind to basically think about it as like, at the very small level, because a lot of things aren't ev even possible to measure. Like if you think about it, like, it's impossible to open this box that the cat's in. So you can't know definitively. It's impossible. So the only way you can think about it is that the cat is alive and dead. In, the, in this like quantum mechanical approach, the only way you can think of the like tiniest particles and things is that it is all probabilistic. It's all a way of probabilities of where it's most likely to be or least likely to be, if that makes sense. It's crazy, like nothing is definitive, everything is probabilistic. It's just a probability, it's just a maybe, you know what I mean? Like, insanity. So yeah, physics just kind of fascinates me and I'll try to stop rambling about physics because you came here for tattoos, not for physics. But I tried to explain it to kind of give you an impression of how mind-blowing that is to me and how fascinating and amazing it is to learn about. So yeah, as, <laughs> as a person, I just really love physics and I think Schrodinger's cat is probably one of the things that kind of made me feel like, oh my god, I want to study physics because that is so cool and I need to know more about it, you know, and I did learn more about it. And it gets even more cool the more you learn about it. It also gets more difficult <laughs> to grasp the more you learn about it, but it's pretty amazing either way. So that's why I wanted to put a visual representation of it on my body. To give you another reason why it means a lot to me is that I generally just love cats a lot. That's a big reason. I think that's perfect enough, you know? What more reason do you need than you put something on your body that you really, really love? And for me, I really love cats. So, because they are my spirit animal, they are my favourite creatures in the planet, and yeah, I just love them a lot. Cats mean a lot to me. I have had four over my life. I have two now. The original idea actually was to have this cat be the face of the alive cat on this tattoo but because she's tortoise shell that means she has like different discolorations on her face so the tattoo artist suggested that we have it be just like a plain sort of yeah black cat kind of look because trying to do the discoloration or the different colors and patterns on her would maybe distract away from the detail of the rest of the piece so that's another important point that I'll make for this video is that, you know, work with your artist if um, you had this idea but you're not, like, sure about particular things, the artist will have a very good idea because it's what they do for a living. They make these pieces of art for any number of people and, yeah, they, they know th things like this. Like, I wouldn't have known it might not be a good idea to have her kind of patterning on this tattoo if it weren't for me going to a good artist that that was good of him um so basically yeah it was going to be her face but then it had to be like a plain face so i sort of kind of more think of it like if we're going to think of him like he is a memorial to anyone it is alfie my old black cat that died another thing i would say is that the reason this idea was appealing to me is because i really love weird macabre things like skulls and bones and skeletons and um, dead things so <laughs> that in itself just really fascinates me. My favourite sections of museums to go to is always the Egyptian and then I love 
looking at like the mummified humans or I've seen a mummified cat in a museum once as well and it just really really fascinates me like I love that we're able to have something physical and tangible of a person that was alive and walking around maybe like 4,000 or so years ago and they you know yeah like they were alive they had a life in a world that was completely different to the world that we know now and you know yeah <laughs> and then we have something physical of them that remains so 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 many years later I think that's incredible and it just fascinates me that that part of us will be preserved for goodness knows how long if you don't get cremated that is but either way dead things to me are just cool so I'm quite happy to have that on my body yeah, I will say that both of the tattoos I've gotten, I don't see the, I, d I didn't rather see the full design until the day of the appointment. I don't know whether all tattoo artists do that, but both of mine did. So you do have to put a lot of trust into your artist. You are of course always allowed to make tweaks to the design that they present you on the day if there's something that you don't like, because rem remember that this is something that you're going to have on your body forever pretty much. So it needs to be like perfectly everything you want it to be so if there's anything that you don't like don't ever be afraid to let the artist know that on the day because you don't want to end up with something on your body that's any less than exactly what you want it to be and definitely beforehand it's important to like send your artists references of the different images that you think would help them know what it is that you're imagining in your mind so some people will be able to like perfectly design the tattoo they want before they go. Both of mine so far have been sort of more a concept that I thought of and then left it to the artist to sort of make that art, that concept come to life. I'm just gonna let the cat out of my room. Yeah, definitely send them all reference images that help. If you have an idea of what you want and you see sort of designs that you'd want something similar to, it's perfectly okay to just send all of that over to your artist to make sure that they have everything they need to make it as best as it could possibly be. So in terms of paying for this one, it really wasn't bad at all, I don't think. Obviously it was two and a half years ago now, so it's hard to remember. But yeah, it wasn't that bad. I wasn't able to like sit in the most comfortable position ever. So it was a bit, it was more uncomfortable and annoying than it was painful, I would say, this tattoo. I was also just frustrated the whole time because I kept like twitching for the tattoo artist's sake. I didn't want to be annoying for him. So I was more just anxious up in my own head than I was thinking about the pain. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, pain was not that bad for a thigh piece. I guess maybe because of all the fatty tissue. I forget whether it's supposed to be most painful if it's right next to bone or if it's right next to muscle. I think it's both, but I'm not sure. So I wouldn't trust me. But I feel like surely and through experience so far that the fattier it is sort of the better because it's less near all of the nerve endings and that that will trigger the pain. This one cost me I would think around £300. I'm not sure on the exact figure because again it was a while ago and I can't remember and I paid in cash but it was about £300 I think which I think is sort of on a how long it was going to take kind of basis because I think it only took like three hours so it was like £100 an hour which is a very typical kind of pricing for a very good tattoo artist. I think it's a, it was a similar thing for my second tattoo as well, like a £100 an hour sort of rate. Yeah, £300, not that painful. Obviously it was a first tattoo so um, I was very unfamiliar with the feeling. It was painful compared to never having had a tattoo before, if that makes any sense. Like I definitely felt it, but once you get used to the feeling, the rest of the tattoo is never that bad, if that makes sense. Yeah, like I said, I went all the way down to Norwich for it. I can't remember the name of the tattoo shop, but I'll put it here if I can remember. And the tattoo artist's name was Thomas Bates, so his Instagram will be around here. And so we should probably move on to my second tattoo, because I've been talking about my first tattoo for a long time. This one will probably take less long to explain, because it's main meaning for me is what it represents for my mental health journey basically. So this tattoo is a phoenix and you probably know but if you don't, phoenixes they are a mythical bird creature that when they die they burn into ashes and then from the ashes rises a reborn phoenix basically. All fiery and beautiful 
and better than before. So for me that kind of symbolises the experience of dealing with difficult mental health and that no matter how many times you feel like you crumble into, you know, you hit rock bottom and everything is terrible and awful, you'll always rise back up from the ashes and become stronger and better than you ever were. And that's kind of, to put it simply, what this tattoo means to me. Like, I am a phoenix and cannot be destroyed basically by whatever is being thrown at me. I will rise up as a new and better phoenix than before, however many times that it takes, you know? Phoenixes are mythical creatures that when they die and fade to ash, they rise from the ashes as beautiful, fiery badass beings better than ever. So for me that means no matter how hard I may fall and crumble, I can always rise from that situation and be reborn as the best me I could be. I will always be okay, even if I hit rock bottom, because I am a phoenix and I will get the heck back up again. <laughs> Yes, I've also written this tattoo and the idea for it kind of came from one of my favourite quotes of all time, which I might misquote now when I say it, but I'll say it anyway and put it on the screen if I've said it. It's, for a star to be born, one thing must happen, a gaseous nebula must collapse. So collapse, crumble, this is not your destruction, this is your birth. Which is so poignant to me, again a very very similar thing to Phoenix's, stars go through the same thing they are always born from the death of another star as the quote says a, a star will sort of explode and collapse and send materials out everywhere and the energy from that destruction and the chaos will birth a new star which will be as big and bright as be and beautiful as ever over astronomical units of time but still <laughs> that's how it happens and yeah that kind of I had the idea for a tattoo based on this quote long before I even thought of getting a phoenix um, because the quote kind of just means a lot to me and I found it at a time when things were extremely difficult and I feel like repeating it as a mantra to myself sort of helped me get through these things yeah just knowing that in death and destruction and horrible things like that beautiful things can be born out of them and arise from them and these things can be bigger and better than the, the death and destruction ever were in the first place if that makes sense that's something that really gets me through it's a positive spin on very negative circumstances um yeah but eventually i realized the parallels between this quote and the way that phoenixes mythically operate the way that their life works just made so much sense to me for you know a tattoo that represents my mental health and the journey i've been through and may go through in the future a phoenix is a very good representation of it and not only that but the phoenix i got ended up being bloody badass and awesome wilfred chite his instagram is here the tattoo studio i went to in nottingham this time not actually as far is going to be there and just thank you so much it's incredible i really love it i got this tattoo days before lockdown was announced <laughs> so weird timing but it had been obviously booked and planned for a long time as tattoos typically are but even though the whole coronavirus pandemic thing was still going on at the time I decided still to go for this tattoo because of all of those reasons and when you think about it tattoo studios are probably one of the most like hygienically clean clinical-esque even places that you can be anyway because they have to keep everything super super clean and professional in a place like that anyway because you're creating wounds in your body of art that can easily get infected if anything is not super pristine clean so yeah just hats off to Thundercats Tattoo Studio for you know making that experience as pleasant and easy as it could be in this current pandemic they gave us masks to wear throughout the appointment because it was like a five hour appointment it cost me about 500 pounds but yeah we wore masks and there was hand sanitizer everywhere they were down to skeleton staff so it was just wilfred and robin robin tattoos um they were the only two people in there so any risk to me or anyone else was very very minimalised. I was as safe as possible to get this done 
yeah, so it's about, we've done five weeks of lockdown, haven't we? And it was just before that, so it must be five weeks old. So it's pretty much healed now. I think it was pretty much fully healed by like three weeks. Because this is quite a, a lot bigger a piece than my other one, I would say the first three and a half hours, and he worked from the bottom of my ankle up to the middle in around that time, I would say. So that first half of the tattoo was pretty easy. I was lying down for the experience, so I was in a pretty comfortable position. I had headphones, so I just listened to music. I was nice and well distracted. Yeah, it really wasn't that painful for the first three and a half hours, I would say, roughly. And then the, the last hour and a half, I would say, is when I started to struggle. And I don't know whether that's because the area was up near the ditch of my knee, so potentially that could be a more painful area, I'm not really sure, but I think more so it was because he'd done so much of the tattoo already, my skin was really inflamed and irritated and obviously bits of it were bleeding at times, so the skin as you go on gets more and more sensitive, so I feel like towards the end of it, it was just like, yeah, being tattooed in on a very, 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 very already inflamed and sensitive area just made it hurt more. So I did struggle for the last hour and a half, basically, it did hurt a lot more towards the end, but it's all very, very much worth it, because I love the tattoo that came out of it. So yeah, I mean like overall the pain was not bad at all, but it hurt more towards the end because it's a bigger piece. My tattoo artist did of course like give us breaks in between so that we weren't working through it for like hours and hours at a time with no rest, which helped, breaking it up helped. I would say the only bit that really hurt in the beginning is like down right near my ankle where my t uh, the Achilles tendon is and I think that's probably again like because it's right near nerve endings and bone so that hurt and also I'm really bad at shaving so <laughs> I have like a scar down here I can remember it hurting more around those points and I think that's because of the scarring, and also because of the area. Yeah, but other than that, it didn't hurt that much. Uh, if you want to know what it sort of feels like, a lot of people say cat scratch. I wouldn't say it feels like a cat scratch. It, it definitely feels like you're being prodded very, very, very many times per second by a needle deep into your skin. It definitely feels like that, because that's what's happening. And the pain... Like, it's definitely there, even in le lesser painful areas, but you very much just get used to it the more a tattoo goes on, pretty much, so... Yeah, towards, like, the middle of your tattoo, typically, you'll be so used to the feeling that you're sort of more numb to it, and it just kind of... Yeah, if people say that they don't really feel it, it's probably just because they've gotten used to the feeling, if that makes sense. But typically, it's well worth it in the end if you've, like, paid the money for a very good art artist, and you, you know, have a very good idea before you go in of what you want and you don't think you're going to change your mind, like you've sat on the idea long enough that you know what you want confidently and you're not going to ever regret it, then it's very, 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 very worth any level of pain that you go through getting a tattoo, is what I would say. Because I'm not, I don't think my pain tolerance is super amazing, but in my mind, if I've got the idea and I really, really want the idea, it doesn't matter how much it hurts, I'm gonna sit through that pain because it's gonna be worth it, so. Yes, that, yeah, two tattoo artists that I've had, Chite Art on Instagram and Thomas Bates Tattoo on Instagram, so go look at their work, they're amazing. Um, the way that I do typically have in the past, rather, um, decided who I want to tattoo me and for what ideas is through Instagram, that's how I find them. If their Instagram feed has a lot of work that I really like and their style seems like it'd fit with an idea I have, then I get in touch with those artists on Instagram or through their email that they'll put on their Instagram and ask them if they do the piece. So, very good idea for picking your artists is using the internet and Instagram because in their Instagram feeds can, can work like a portfolio. So, yeah use that to help you pick your artist. Um, I wouldn't recommend just going to any old artist and like just turning up and asking them for this idea because then how do you know that they're going to deliver what you want to like a high quality and a high standard? 
the more money you put into it, the better it's going to be really and yeah, it can get expensive but again, like I said with the pain and whatnot, like the money is worth it. I would never recommend going to a cheaper artist because you think you need to get a cheaper deal because the the cheaper artist is probably going to do a way less good job than an artist that has a more like expensive rate, if that makes sense. Don't come at me though if you do know of some artists out there that do overcharge for tattoos and things if you think that their quality of work is not worth the money but it, through my experience and what I kind of see from watching other like tattoo videos as well is that typically if they if they charge a higher rate then they're probably just that good at what they do that it's worth it so yeah I think to round it up I'll just say that those are my tattoos pictures and videos hopefully were placed throughout um, I love them I'm very 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 happy with them they both mean a lot to me for different reasons I know I'm gonna get more on day I have no immediate definitive plans of things I know I'm going to get so I won't put those out on the internet because I'm not 100% sure whether I'll get any of them yet like I do have a list in my phone of ideas that I like and you know as and when I think of ways to develop those ideas or think of you know like confidently feel like I'm gonna get that tattoo someday then you know then I'll like work on developing that and finding the artist that will be good for that tattoo and that sort of thing um, but yeah so there is vague plans to get more tattoos because I don't know I just love tattoos and I want more of them on my body because you know it's just like fun art pieces that you carry around with you on your skin all the time which is pretty cool and I think also when I'm more recovered from a lot of my mental health problems I would say that you know definitely when more of my scars have healed better I definitely want to get um, scar cover-ups I would like to tattoo over them just because that would feel better to me um, but obviously yeah, I feel like I need to be more past my mental health issues to confidently do that so that's way in the future um, and yeah probably any more tattoos are at least a few years in the future because I need to be more confident on the ideas that I want and whatnot first. A recommendation is to have an idea and sit on that idea for about a year before you decide to get it to make sure that you're not going to regret it basically. Um, which is what I've done with all of my tattoos pretty much. I hope you enjoyed, leave comments below, anything you want to ask if you have any questions that I didn't cover. Um, like, subscribe if you like my content. Bye, I love you so much, see you in the next one. <laughs>